everybody, Chris, the old ass retro gamer here, back with another live stream for my pickups for October 2020. I think my microphone is peaking just a little bit. Turn that shit down. Yeah, how's that? There we go. That's it. That's the ticket. Yeah. Let me fix this real quick. And there we go. All right, so welcome, everybody. It's been a while. I uh, haven't done anything since the end of September. Uh, didn't think I was going to be doing a live stream at the end of this month for pickups because, honestly, I hadn't been buying much. Yeah, I found some stuff here and there, but uh, I didn't think I'd have enough to talk about until yesterday. Uh, so, director Kevin Smith uh, decided to come to Chicago He's been doing these pop-up restaurants based on his movie Clerks. Uh, Clerks 2 specifically, the movies restaurant that was like featured in the movies. He's been doing pop-up movie restaurants across the country. And this week it's Chicago's turn. And uh, went and did it on Friday night. Had to place my order in advance, go pick up my food. It's all right. Uh, but Rocket Sauce from the Cartridge Club, who lives in Milwaukee, also signed up to do it. He had Mine was on Friday. His reservation was for yesterday, Halloween. So we came down, and we hung out all day, and uh, we went game hunting across Chicago, and yeah, stuff happened. Money was spent. Lots of money. Uh, so now I actually do have things to talk about. It is not Thursday, Peter. I am sorry. Sorry. But whatever. Live stream. It's happening right now. Yes. So actually, I have a ton of stuff to talk about now, including some special stuff. Uh, so something that's been going on recently... My brother came to visit last week from L.A., and what was the first thing that happened when he came to visit? My mom calls me up. She says, Chris, come on down here to hang out with your brother at my place. Let's, let's hang. Let's have some dinner and whatnot. And the moment I get in there, she's like, hey, guess what? We're going to go clean out the storage space. She duped me. But I found some stuff from back in the day that I had forgotten about, some of which was video game related, like... I found boxes and boxes of my old comic books, including all of my old Mortal Kombat comics. Issue zero. I uh, got two issues of the, or one issue of the Battle Wave comic. Uh, how many of these? Four, five issues of the Blood and Thunder series. Three issues of Goro, Prince of Pain. One issue of Raiden and Kano, and two issues of the U.S. Special Forces. Malibu Comics, back in the 90s, like, they bought the rights to produce comics of Mortal Kombat, and they really got their money's worth. They put out a ton of Mortal Kombat stuff, and I picked up a lot of it. I'm missing a couple of issues here and there, but whatever. I thought that'd be kind of cool to bring up. Um, some other stuff I found, like toys and whatnot, and old home movies, but... Uh, one thing that I ordered on Friday is both video game related. Stop it, camera. You're pissing me off. Is video game related and movie related. And uh, I talked about one of these that I ha already had in my collection when I was talking about the movie Tron. Uh, also has to do with Kingdom Hearts. I had a Tron and uh, a bad guy compilation, like a, a fig an action figure set. It was like the two of them. It was a Tron from Kingdom Hearts and like one of the little generic bad guys that you fight well they also made one of the film's villain sark and it comes with what is that sora yeah sora in like the tron outfit and i've been wanting to get this for the longest time it's been i've seen them on ebay and they're going for like 120 dollars i don't know why i got this off of amazon for 20 bucks but the thing that gets me is this packaging is so overdone and over, it's like so big compared to the other one that I have with Tron in it. I don't understand what was going on. Uh, what do we need all that empty space for? I don't know. But I have another Sark figure, or another Tron figure to add to the collection, which is always awesome. I need to find some place to put it. <laughs> uh, so now let's get into... The movies. I'm going to talk about the movies on the physical media that I've gotten over the past month, as well as the video games, and tradition so far has been to talk about the movies first, get them out of the way, and then we get into the games. So we'll start off with the movies that I've picked up. Starting off with the DVD, and it's not really because I want to watch it. This is to add to my Tron collection, just like that action figure set that I just showed off. 
I bought a copy of the 20th Anniversary Collector's Edition of Tron on DVD. And it's a two-disc set. Uh, one disc is the film, one disc is a ton of extras, which were ported over from this really awesome Laserdisc edition that had come out a few years before this did, uh, which my father did have back in the day, and the extras were awesome. There were interviews with Jeff Bridges, he still has his helmet that he wore in the movie, and he puts it on during the interview, and he's just like, I'm ready for part two, man, let's do it. You know, stuff like that. Conserve energy, that's why the packaging is so big. I don't know what that is. Why, like, I, when I put that right next to the Tron figure from Kingdom Hearts, it's like a two-to-one ratio on packaging. I don't get it. <laughs> Big package. Hello! Yeah. I knew all of our minds are going to go to that place at some point. Uh, but I did have this back in the day. This was the copy of Tron. I did have another edition of Tron, which was just like a generic, like, one that Disney threw out. Uh, that was just a widescreen copy. I don't think it had any extras on it, but this one is awesome. They also, at the exchange that I went to, also had that other edition. Uh, I might go back and pick that up just so I can add it to the collection. I do have Tron on VHS as well, so I'm trying to get like as many different versions of the movie on physical media as I can just for the collection's sake. But, yeah. That's not to watch. That's to relish and savor. Let it gain or uh, gather dust in the on the shelf. Okay, so when it comes to the movies and stuff, uh, I'll do it the same way I did my live streams where I talked about like box sets and uh, DVD or TVs, TV on Blu-ray, TV on physical media. I'll start off with the TV stuff. I've gotten two things in the stream where I did talk about the TV sets I had. I said that hey, when it comes to that show Spartacus that used to be on Encore, I had. The, two, the first two seasons, the miniseries, Gods of the Arena, but I was missing season three. Uh, so I ended up going to a Half Price Books and I randomly found Spartacus War of the Damned, which is the third and final season of Spartacus. Uh, this is after Andy Whitfield passed and uh, Liam McIntyre took over. He's not bad, he's just, he just, you can, he's not the same. <laughs> By the way, welcome everybody that is here watching. I, I'm glad to see that there are people here to listen to me babble on and on. So yeah, this is where everything comes to a head and then everything that you know of happened to Spartacus from history ends up happening. So sadness ensues. Uh, but it is a great series. It is violent. There's tons of nudity. You get to see uh, Xena, Warrior Princesses, Tasty Hoots all the time. She is great on this show, by the way. She is a fantastic actress. I'm surprised she doesn't get more stuff. Like, I don't surprise she gets she doesn't get more film roles and whatnot, but whatever. It's a great show. This is the last of it, though. I'm glad that they didn't keep drawing it out, you know, way past its sell by date. Uh, and they kept it real short and sweet. Three seasons. You got that little prequel mini series, and it was good. But they could have kept going with it, and it probably would have just sucked as it went along. Um, also picked up the fourth season of Star Trek The Next Generation. These are the remastered versions that they actually played like in theaters for a little while uh, when they're advertising each new season. They play a couple of episodes back to back. Um, yes, I know that these are all on Netflix, but the thing is I own the first three seasons already and when you watch them on Blu-ray compared to what you watch on Netflix, the Blu-ray still looks way better. It's way sharper and crisper. You're streaming. It's not going to look exact. Uh, so, yes, I'm still interested in picking all of these up. I wish they would do it to uh, Deep Space Nine. I, this remaster treatment would be awesome. Yeah, but Netflix may not be around together, so. Um, but this has a few of my favorite episodes in this season. Um, there is the follow-up to The Best of Both Worlds, where Picard gets turned into Locutus by the Borg. Uh, that's a great episode, but the episode that immediately, immediately follows it is called Family, where Picard goes back to his home in France to rest up after, you know, being unborgified and, like, clashes with his dickhead brother. That's one of my favorite episodes. I I love character development episodes over, like, action-heavy ones, and it's just all about Picard. You finally get to see what Picard's like when he's not on the ship, and it's great. Uh, there's also a few other episodes. I can't think of any off the bat, but there's one called Brothers, where Data meets Dr. Soong, his creator, which is pretty awesome. Use a lot of that stuff in my Star Trek Nemesis sequel script. Shh, don't tell anybody. Um, but yeah, it's a great season. This is where like the show really came into its own. Uh, season three was good. 
season four was where it was like, yes, now this is essential watching. So there's that. I also talked in the regular, the film collection streams that I had done that, uh, or I think actually, no, it was last month's stream. I talked about picking up this first movie in this series while I was out with It's Rocket Sauce when I was visiting him in Wisconsin. Uh, I picked up Happy Death Day while I was out there because I've been wanting to watch it. It's not streaming anywhere, so just I found a real cheap Blu-ray of it and watched it, and I loved it. I absolutely loved it, so I immediately wanted to see the sequels. Well, I picked up Happy Death Day to You, which is part two. And uh, this is amazing as well. It is a ton of fun. It is, I mean, yes, it brings back the Groundhog Day mechanic, but where the first one was kind of like a horror thriller comedy, this one is a, more of a sci-fi comedy that reminds me a lot of Back to the Future. I mean, at one point, the, me, the main character actually wears, like, Marty McFly's vest. <laughs> and it is hilarious. You actually get a finally get a reason as to why the loop was happening in the first movie, and it's really silly and creative and fun and i really enjoyed it i hope they make a third one they're talking about it but yeah i can't wait if they actually do get around to doing it with the covid shit not to derail the stream but did you see the court ruling about whether or not you own the movies you buy in amazon prime see i don't buy them i just watch what they have available for free i i'll rent one if i need to watch one for the podcast or something but i don't actually buy digital movies at all ever like i said i'm all about that physical media y'all uh, while I was out with Rocket Sauce yesterday, uh, we went to a whole bunch of stores. We went to a couple of exchanges. We were going to go to this store called Play It Retro, which is all about video games. And uh, they closed early on the weekend for Halloween, so or on Saturday for Halloween, so we couldn't go there. I took him to the Half Price Books, the one that I normally go to by work, where I find all my stuff that I usually have in my pickup videos. And they are still lacking in everything. I don't think anybody is really selling them much of anything at all anymore. Um, it's like all the old people that were doing their spring cleaning during the lockdown and all that just were bringing in books, but no media. There's barely any video games in that joint. There's barely any movies. What's up, church? How's it going? Uh, but while I was there with, uh, Rocket Sauce, I picked up a couple of films. I picked up a copy of Oculus, which is by Mike Flanagan, the guy who directed Dr. Sleep and the first season, or what is it? The, the Haunting of Hill House that's on Netflix, which is amazing. Um, the sequel to Ouija, which is way better than it has any right to be. This guy's a fantastic director. This is the first movie I saw of his. I think he made a couple beforehand that I haven't gotten a chance to watch yet. But Oculus is about an evil, possessed mirror that uh, creates illusions and plays with your mind. And it's about a brother and sister who were affected by it when they were kids. And they're trying to destroy it as adults. And things go really wrong. <laughs> Yeah, I miss bookstores. I miss I miss just shopping, but like my, that half price books, it saddens me to see that like there's nothing there anymore. Uh, but it's a great movie. I saw this in the theater with my ex, and she didn't want to see it. I pushed to see it, and when it was over, she was like, "Yes." And I said, when it was over, I was like, "That was like watching the original Halloween." And my ex was like, "How so?" I'm like, "You never got a reason for why Michael Myers was doing what he was doing in the first Halloween. Well, you didn't get a reason for why the mirror is the way it is and why it does what it does in this either." And it made it more mysterious and creepy. And she's like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I also picked up this. This is kind of like a guilty pleasure. I don't think it's that great, but I got it for like five bucks. So it's Push. Uh, uh, one of the umpteenth movies that Chris Evans was in where he played a superhero. <laughs> it's about a bunch of like superheroes. There's like classifications. Like some people can push you to do things like, you know, in your mind. They can convince you to do things. Uh, some people have telekinesis. Some people can see the future. Some people can make you bleed. Uh, some people, I think they can scream and, like, shatter shit. Uh, but it's it's a fun little silly superhero action movie that I think was supposed to be the jumping-off point of a series, and it just never happened. But I enjoyed it when I saw it in the theater. I haven't seen it since then, so I was... I've been, like, thinking about it lately that I've... You know, I, it's been a while since I saw it. That came out in, like, 2011 or whatever it was. I Can they make Superman bleed? That is the question. I need to make that movie. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute, they already did. Um, but yeah, I need to watch this again. Like I said, I've really been thinking about that one. So, um, Shout Factory, Scream Factory, they normally do like a Halloween clearance sale of older movies. Lately, they've been discontinuing a lot. Yeah, Push, I remember being pretty cool. I just don't remember a lot of it, but I wanted to watch it again because like I said, I've only seen it the one time. But Oculus, like, I thought it was great. I showed it to... My friend Charlie, um, what's it, uh, 
Epic Die Studio, who shows up in the chats once in a while. Uh, we were watching a bunch of horror movies. I was going to show him some of the uh, Insidious films. And uh, I showed him Oculus because it was streaming, I think, on Amazon at the time. And he, I think he loved it, too. He was just kind of like, wow, I did not see that you know, being a good movie at all. And he goes, it was awesome. And then, you say to me, Killer Mirror. Yay. <laughs> um, so I was saying, uh, Shout Factory, Scream Factory, they've been discontinuing a lot of their movies. What's up, Top Spot? How's it going? Welcome. Uh, so I was on their website looking to see what they were clearancing out for their Halloween sale, and I happened to go too far down the page, and I saw all the stuff that they had discontinued recently. And I was like, ah! Oh! Some of these I've had on my like wish list on Amazon for the longest time, and I just never pulled the trigger. I was like, oh, this is some bullshit, and I'm never going to be able to get this stuff without paying like top dollar you know, for them. So I was kind of bummed. But I decided to go looking anyway, and I went to Amazon, and sure enough, two of the ones that I wanted, which are like two packs with two movies in the set, were like going for, one was going for like 80 bucks, one was going for about 110, and I was like, there is no way in hell I'm paying 110 for when you see what movies it is. You're going to be like, yeah, I wouldn't either. But then I decided to check eBay, and eBay, I got them each for like $20, which was cheaper than I had. they were when I had them in my... Uh, wish list on Amazon. So I was like, that's the way to go. Sometimes eBay is your friend. So I picked up the one that was going for about $110 is, you ready for this? The Breakin' and Breakin' 2 Electric Boogaloo set. Uh, yeah. I saw both of these movies in the theater, at the Dollar Theater. My mother took us, me and my brother, to see these when I was a kid. And yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like guilty pleasure movies. They're just silly. The first one is more serious than the second one. The first one was... I don't know if it was like trying to be completely dead serious, but it was not trying to like make fun of breakdancing the way the second one kind of does. The second one is just nutso. It's just crazy. We have a bigger budget. Let's just do whatever. Let's get iced tea in this movie too somewhere. Duh. They're dancing their way to the top. Yep. Uh, but the first movie actually, I think, is still pretty decent. Even though the acting isn't the greatest, but you don't watch canon films for acting. Uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme cameo alert in Breakin'. The first big breakdance scene on the beach. You see him, like, standing there watching, and he's, like, clapping and shit and trying to dance. And I hear they fired him because he started doing backflips and shit to try to get attention. And they're like, get this dude out of here. <laughs> he's acting like a nut. Uh, but, yeah, they're, they're, I watched the first one the other day when this showed up, and I was like, yeah. It's still pretty entertaining. And then I watched the second one. I was like, yeah, it's still kind of crappy. <laughs> but these are movies from my childhood and I wanted to own them. And the transfer is actually really, really good. So I can't complain. And the other one is also stuff from my childhood. It's another, uh, I've talked about Charles Band and Full Moon Productions. His company before Full Moon was Empire Pictures. And uh, I've talked about some of his movies. I own a bunch, like Reanimator was one of them from Beyond. Uh, there's a double pack of... Dungeon Master. I should probably open this because the glare is horrendous on the TV. Uh, you get an unboxing on camera, guys. Uh, this is the sorry, the Dungeon Master and Eliminators. Uh, the Dungeon Master was Empire's attempt to do sort of like a sci-fi version of Creep Show. Where, like, this geeky computer guy ends up getting, like, zapped into, like, an alternate dimension where Richard Maul plays, like, this overlord guy and he keeps throwing the main character into, like, these different, uh, like, realms to play. It's almost like a game. Uh, one of them, it's, like, Mad Max. One of them is, I can't even remember. It's been so long. One of them was, like, Mad Max. One of them is, like, a horror movie. And one of them is almost like a Ray Harryhausen movie type of thing where it's all stop motion shit. And it's pretty cheap and cheesy and silly. And a lot of it is just reused footage from other movies that Empire put up. Because all the Mad Max stuff is from uh, Metal Storm, The Destruction of Jared Sin, which I do own already. Eliminators I saw in the theater. My mother took us to see this at the Dollar Theater. It has Denise Crosby from Star Trek The Next Generation. I saw her in this before I saw Star Trek. And it's kind of like a, uh, it's kind of like a sci-fi action movie. A guy creates a time machine, or a bad guy creates a time machine... Wants to go back in time and start changing shit. And he had like a half man, half cyborg assistant who rebels and gets a team together, including like a ninja and a boat captain that's kind of like a younger version of uh, Quint from Jaws. And uh, Denise Crosby, she plays like a computer expert and she has this 
goofy little R2-D2 robot that flies around. And they're going to go take on Batty before he goes and alters history. It's silly and it's fun. It's silly and it's stupid, but it's fun. And I really had not been able to find this anywhere to stream. So I was like, well, I'll get the DVD or the Blu-ray copy, watch it there. And I'm not paying 80 bucks for this off of uh, Amazon. So finding this for 20 bucks on eBay was the way to go. But yes, those two are discontinued permanently now. So if you're interested, you might want to hit up the eBay. And uh, I also picked up another Arrow video. Uh, Blu-ray, and I think they released this just this month, and I happened to be putzing around on Amazon at work, and I was just kind of like, oh yeah, that! So I got an upgrade. It's uh, The Last Starfighter. Arrow just released like this uber special edition of this with a new transfer and everything. And it has a bunch of new extras, which were made during the pandemic, because you can tell everybody that's being interviewed is doing it over Zoom. <laughs> and they try to hide it by putting filters on it to make it look like black and white. And stuff like that while they're showing footage of the movie while they're, while they're talking and stuff like that. It's kind of funny to watch go down. But, I mean, this is what extras are going to be like on movies for the next year, probably. Uh, but the movie, I just finished watching it maybe 45 minutes before the stream started. And it still holds up. It's a fun-ass science fiction action movie from the 80s with really dated special effects, early CGI. It's fun as hell. I love it. And uh, I'm really glad that I ended up picking this up. Because this is one of the few movies that Arrow Video actually localizes for the u.s most all of their stuff comes out in the uk rarely do we get stuff localized for the u.s and canada so yeah but the last movie i have to talk about is a gigantic set that sh that i pre-ordered in august i think when i first heard about it and it showed up two weeks ago maybe three weeks ago and i'm super stoked i've watched a couple of the movies on here already and it is the Friday, I just belched in the middle of that. Nom, 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 nom. Tasty biscuits. Uh, Friday the 13th Collection Deluxe Edition. I feel really bad for the people who bought this off of the Shout or Scream Factory website. Because that thing was going for like $170. I got this off of Amazon. I pre-ordered it for $129. I do not need that giant ass poster that came with it. I have no place to put it. It's this artwork that's on the box, which I will admit is pretty cool for the box. I don't want to hang it up on my wall, but I'm glad that I was able to save like 40 bucks. Uh, and it comes with every single Friday the 13th movie on it. I, I originally did have, I showed it off in my box sets episode of the film collection streams that I had a box set of the first eight Friday the 13th movies. It was all the movies in the series that were released by Paramount, but all the stuff that was released by New Line was absent because Paramount put that set out. After Part 8 underperformed, they sold the rights to New Line. New Line kept making the movies after that. This has everything, Paramount and New Line Cinema. So you got the original, Friday the 13th, which has two versions of the movie on it. It has the original and the uncut. I think the uncut version has like a grand total of 40 seconds added onto it. Uh, yeah, it's like 40 seconds of random stuff, and it doesn't really affect the movie in any way. A couple of extra shots of some gore uh, for like maybe like a split second, but it's it's really nothing spectacular. Uh, but yeah, we got two discs of it. Uh, we got part, yeah, part dose, which is one of my favorites in the series. And this one has a lot of extra, or sorry, uh, deleted footage that had never been seen before. It was some extra gore stuff that was deleted for rating the uh, ratings. Um, and it's nothing spectacular either. Some of the kills are actually just a little bit longer. Like the, the death with the spear through the two people making out on the bed is probably the goriest thing that they cut out. Because the way that works is in the movie, it's just like Jason goes like this. And next thing you know, you see the people go, uh. And the spearhead comes out of the bottom of the bed with some blood on it. In this version, it's like Jason puts it on the back of the dude that's on top of the girl and starts digging it in and then like really starts to push it through like slowly, slowly, slowly. And then it comes out the bottom. Um, are you uncut? <laughs> 40 seconds of boobs. Yeah, I don't even I couldn't even tell in the first movie what it was i mean i think there was maybe just like split second stuff that they just put back in but i don't understand why they called it like the uncut version the reason i really wanted this set is because we finally got a th a 3d blu-ray of part three which was in 3d and this is possibly the best this movie has ever looked on home video 
normally when you transferred a movie from the 80s to from that was in 3D like the Anaglyph 3D with the blue and the red uh, to 2D for home video it was just it's a blurry mess and it looks like shit everything is out of focus it just it sucks it's just ugh. and the thing is it is absolutely fantastic in 3D finally the picture is sharp as hell there's still a little blurriness every once in a while. You might see like a little halo around somebody's head where like some of the red might have, you know, leached through. But the thing is, where I always said, said that this movie was boring as shit because of the way it was filmed, once you watch it in 3D, you really start to understand why. Because it's like depth of field stuff. There's like this shot that I always thought lingered way too long where the main characters are in that van. They're driving down the street. The camera's following them. It's like kind, of, kind of like a long shot. There's this big wooded grassy area in front of the camera and the road is in the background and the camera is just slowly following the van as it goes down the road and it just like stops and just lets the van drive off into like the background and i'm like why do you keep on why are you keeping the camera on them and then you watch it in 3d and you're like oh because all of this layering stuff is in your face and it was really kind of cool to see it in 3d so all of a sudden the movie works a hell of a lot more for me when i watch it in 3d so now it's awesome you have a 3D TV? No, I just watch it on the PSVR top spot. That's all I do. I want a real uncut version of a film, like all 150 hours. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I want the uncut version of Hellraiser 4. That's never going to happen. Uh, they're also talking... Scream Factory's talking about putting out like an uncut version of Event Horizon. They're trying to look for all that deleted footage. Um, but Friday the 13th, the final chapter, my least favorite, or one of my least favorite films in this franchise. I just think this one is dumb. Yeah, the graphic gore is awesome and all that, but I just I can't stand any of the characters. And that guy getting, what is it, hand-raked by Jason the Basic one? He's killing me! He's killing me! He's killing me! I was like, yeah, shut the hell up and die already. Uh, Friday the 13th Part 5, The New Beginning. This is the Who Done It Jason movie, kind of like Part 3 in the Halloween series, where it was going to be more of a focus from this point on. With uh, It was going to be focused on Tommy Jarvis losing his mind and becoming the next Jason which is why this movie ended the way it did. Um, and then that didn't happen because then we got Jason goes to hell, or sorry, Jason lives Friday the 13th part six, which is one of my favorites because this turns into like the most meta horror movie before Scream. It is fantastic. It is funny. <laughs> the characters are all likable. Uh, the guy that plays Tommy Jarvis in this, uh, Tom Matthews is, is great. <laughs> uh, like, some of the kills are, like, done for laughs. Like, that army guy that gets his face smashed into the tree and someone had carved a smiley face in the tree and when the guy's face falls away from it, you see, like, it's just this bloody smiley face. Thank you. It's my Ready Player One. Can't wait for Ready Player Two, the book, to come out. Uh, this one is awesome. Not really that gory. Uh, but here is the first movie I ever saw in the series, and that's Friday the 13th Part 7, The New Blood. This one had the most problems. This one was edited beyond belief for gore. Because of the ratings board cracking down on that type of thing in like 1988. So there's like all this lost footage that they say actually got like destroyed of the gore stuff. But there are VHS copies of some of it which is on here in the extra. So you can actually see what the original kills are supposed to look like. Like that dude getting his head crushed like a beer can. Like in the movie it's like you just see blood start coming down the guy's forehead while Jason's like holding his head. But you are actually got to see him like crush his head down to like nothing. It is great. Uh, that's that's my all-time favorite. And then we got the worst, or sorry, the second worst film to me. And that's Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan. First Friday the 13th movie I ever saw in a theater. First full-on slasher movie I ever saw in a theater. Uh, and I was beyond disappointed. I was so stoked because this was the first one I ever saw. I liked it so much. And there was a recap of Part 6 at the beginning that I immediately had my mother go out and rent me a copy of Part 6 so I can watch it. So these were like two of my favorites. And I was so excited to see the next one that I was like, oh, what is this crappy piece of shit? I just said crap twice, just in two different ways. Whatever. I hate this one. It's stupid. And after that, underperformed. New Line bought the rights to it. And uh, then we got Jason Goes to Hell, The Final Friday, which is my least favorite film in this series. I hate this one with a passion. Like, I took a girl that I was trying to date um, to see this in the theater, and she had never really been into horror movies. But I had been reading interviews with the director uh, in Fangoria magazines, and he was like, we're trying to do something different with this one. Uh, yeah, it's not really about the gore, it's about the characters, and, you know, yeah, there's some gore in it and stuff, but yeah, we're trying to do some different things, and that's how I sold it to her to come and see it with me. I was like, it's supposed to be 
different from all the other ones. And yeah, the different thing is Jason's barely in it, but there's still nothing but gore going on. So, took her to see it, and the whole movie, she was just kind of like, ugh. But, Jason, when they when the uh, army people blow up blow him up in the beginning, the morgue they take him to, and when it said in the theater, it said, Youngstown, Ohio, morgue, uh, that's where all my relatives live in Ohio. So, I was kind of like, my brother was there, he was on the other side of the theater, and I remember I leaned forward to look at him at the exact same moment he leaned forward to look at me, we're like, oh my god! <laughs> so, yeah, hate this movie. Hate it, hate it, hate it. And then you have Jason X, Jason 10, I don't know what the hell you're going to call it, part part 10 in the series, where Jason goes to space. This one's really fun. It's stupid, but it's fun. I just wish it had a different musical score. The musical score is so cheesy and stupid. This one needed like a heavy metal electro score or something just to amp everything up. But it has some of the best kills and all that. It's really fun. Uh, but yeah, that's out of all the movies in like slasher movie franchises where like they go to space, that's probably my favorite one. Uh, you also have Freddy vs. Jason, which is a fantastically fun crossover movie. I love that one a lot. It's super awesome. And then you have the Friday the 13th remake, which I can't stand. Uh, I was really disappointed in this one. So what do they do to update Jason to the modern day? They make him a mongoloid pot farmer. Uh, but it also comes with a disc that is nothing but special features. I think most of the ones on one of the discs, I watched some of them, were carried over from like the DVD set from way back in the day. Um, but there is some new stuff as well. There's a new interview with the composer, Harry Manfredini. There's location scouting stuff. Uh, there's stuff even about the TV show on here, the Friday the 13th show. And it also comes with a book, which is all like stories of the making of the movies, how they came to be, whatnot. From the people involved which is pretty cool only thing is i found out after i bought this i looked it up uh there is an issue with these discs and the issue is that part three part what is it part three jason goes to hell and jason x the discs are all screwed up um i really honestly didn't notice they said that the opening credit sequence is supposed to be in 3d obviously there's like the lettering from the people's you know names are supposed to be coming at your face that part isn't in 3D. I thought it was in 3D when I watched it. I, it looked 3D to me, but apparently it isn't. Uh, there is a shot in the unrated cut of Jason Goes to Hell uh, where one of the people possessed by Jason grabs someone's arm and like uh, hits like the elbow underneath and breaks the person's arm. And there's a shot missing of like the bone popping out of the skin. So that, that disc is screwed. And then Jason 10, or Jason X, there's... The scene where Jason is killing the holographic uh, camp counselors when they're in their sleeping bags and he's beating them to death on each other. You're supposed to hear them giggling and moaning in the sleeping bags, but there's absolutely no sound in that scene. And I checked that out because I watched the movie and yeah, the sound effects are missing from that shot. So they're supposed to be sending out replacement discs. I already signed up for them. I'm supposed to get them once they become available. So we'll see how that works out. But yeah, they were like, yeah, we just don't realize these things. This shows you that there's people out there that have watched these movies so many times and they have everything memorized. Uh, if it wasn't for them, no one would have known any better that those things were missing. So that's awesome. I'm really glad that I picked up that set. I now have the Friday the 13th set like this from Scream Factory. I have their Halloween set and their, their Critters set is on the way. It was supposed to show up today, but it hasn't yet, sons of bitches. Okay, so that's it for movies. Now we're on to the video games. And this camera is making me mad again. Alright, so. We're going to start from the oldest stuff to the newest stuff. And most of this stuff came from yesterday. Hanging out with this rocket sauce in the city. Uh, we went to two exchanges by me. We went to a Half Price Books. And we went to uh, Video Games Then and Now. Which is like my go-to retro store. Even though I find better retro stuff at the exchanges. One specifically. Uh, but we were going to check out this place called Play It Retro that's in Berwyn, but they closed at like 6 p.m., and by the time we were getting ready to go there, it was like 5.55, and we're like, yeah, that's not going to happen. So, yeah. So, picked up Rambo 3 on the Genesis. I've never played this one, but Rocket Sauce was like, that's one of the best Rambo games out there. He's a huge Rambo fan. I was like, yeah, that's great. Um, I always was under the assumption that this was like a light gun game, because I remember seeing back in the day, like, an over-the-shoulder of Rambo, where he's like at the bottom of the screen and he's got his little bow and arrow thing and he's shooting the 
elect the, the uh, explosive arrows out like helicopters and stuff. I thought it was a first like a like a light gun game. And no, he's like, no, it's like playing Commando. And then at the end of each level, there's like a section where you're doing the whole over the shoulder thing with the bow and arrow. I'm like, oh, okay, I get it now. And he's it's actually pretty good. So I picked it up, and I can't wait to try this one out. I've never played it, so it looks pretty cool. So I'm all about it. Put this on the camera. And I have a homebrew that I got from my buddy Eric on uh, from Instagram. He has a store called Toysaurus Games. Light gun games on the Sega Master System. Only game I had back in the day for my Sega Master System. Oh, really? See, I have... I have the Rambo Part 2. I have uh, the First Blood Part 2 game. And that's the one that's also like Commando. So Rambo 3 is the light gun game for the Sega Master System. It's good to know because I don't have a, uh, a CRT, so I wouldn't be able to play it. But yeah, I got a repro for the Genesis from Toy Story's Games, and it's called Omega Blast. Can you see it? There you go. Uh, comes in a really nice looking case, got some pictures on the back, and it's a vertically scrolling bullet hell shooter. And from what I, he tells me that there were no real, like, what we know as a bullet hell shooter nowadays available back then like this. So, it was a made from, made from the ground up bullet hell shooter on the, on the Genesis, and it is fantastic. It is really hard. Only has, like, four levels, I think. Uh, but it's gonna take you a while to get through them because it is hard as shit. Uh, but it looks great. Has really good, really good music. I'm really glad that I picked this up. The moment he put it up for sale, I was just kind of like, "Ha! Click!" <laughs> and yeah, it comes on a uh, yellow translucent cart and all that. Just like most of his games come in really awesome carts. He makes ones that are like filled with junk and stuff like that too. So yeah, glad to pick that up. Got this yesterday with uh, Rocket Sauce, and I've been looking for this for a long time, and it's always way too goddamn expensive. And I found it yesterday for like twenty dollars. And that's loaded, the long box version uh, for the PlayStation. I had this back in the day. It is a really fun, gory, uh, top-down shooter. It's kind of like a run-and-gun, almost like a twin-stick shooter, but you don't have a twin-stick because there were no analog sticks on those uh, PS1 controllers at the beginning. Uh, but I remember having a ton of fun playing this one. Uh, like I said, it's really gory and graphic. It is completely complete. It even comes with a sponge, which surprised the hell out of me. Uh, but can't wait to play this one i might try it out tomorrow to see if it works uh but really stuck to get it now i need to get the sequel reloaded which i remember being just as fun picked this up at uh, uh video games then and now yesterday with rocket sauce and i had no idea that this was a game <laughs> until i saw it there in their expensive case and it was the only game i bought from like their i usually buy a couple games from their like expensive case even though the stuff isn't really that expensive there but I picked up a copy of Crazy Racers on the Game Boy Advance, or Konami Crazy Racers. I think it goes by on my little app on my phone. It's Mario Kart with Konami characters like Goemon and uh, the robot character from Metal Gear Solid. I can't remember his name. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, what's it called? Kid Dracula's in here. So, yeah, I definitely had to pick that up. I love kart racing games. Nowadays, I wasn't into them back then. I didn't even know this was a thing. So, yeah, super stoked to get that. I'm just going to put that over here. Picked up a couple of uh, Nintendo DS games. One of them is a licensed game. And I normally would never in a million years want to own a game based on this license. And then I looked at the back because I was curious as to see what kind of a game it was. And I was like, oh, I think I need it. Uh, I picked up Percy Jackson and the Olympians, The Lightning Thief. I am not a fan of these little Harry Potter re rip-off movies. But when I looked at the back, it's a freaking turn-based RPG. Yes. <laughs> um, I haven't tried it out yet, but I can't wait until I can actually have some time to play an RPG. I hope it's not a long one because I would just I would gladly plow through this as fast as I could. But yeah, there's that. And I also picked up Brothers in Arms DS. I thought I had all the Brothers in Arm game, Arms games until yesterday when we went to video games then and now. This was sitting on their shelf. And I was like, oh shit, another first person shooter I need from the, in this series. Even though I don't think it really is a legit first person shooter. I think it's like an over the shoulder one. I can't really tell. Like I said, I just got it yesterday. Haven't played it yet. Uh, but, yep. Can't wait to try it out. Love the Brothers in Arms games. I love first person shooters. So, yes. 
Uh, picked up these two yesterday when I was out with Rocket Sauce as well. Got these at the exchange. I picked up Spider-Man Web of Shadows. Uh, I've been looking for all of these Spider-Man games that came out during this generation. I think this is the last one I needed. I have... What are they called? Oh, shit. And I, my phone's in the other room, too. Son of a bitch. Um, Shattered Dimensions I have. And... Can I remember what the other one's called? Shit. But anyway, I needed it. And uh, it looks kind of interesting. Spider-Man's creating web shields and stuff while Venom is trying to dry hump them or something. So, I really like the trailer for this game. I have it downloaded on my 360. Yeah, I, I love Spider-Man games, so... Yeah, trying to get all of those, so there's that. But the one that I was really stoked to find super cheap because I've had this on my, or in my wish list on Amazon forever, and the price just keeps jumping up and up and up because of one specific game that's in this. It's a compilation of Konami games on the 360, and it's the Konami Classics Volume 1. Everybody wants this because it has Castlevania Symphony of the Night on it, and I do believe it's the Saturn version, if... I'm not mistaken, uh, which I hear is the better version of the two, I think. I remember one one of my friends says it's awesome, and one of my friends says it's crap, so I don't know anything since I've never played the Saturn version, but drink it, drink. Uh, but I really wanted it because I could play an arcade version of Super Contra. It also comes with Frogger, the arcade version, so yeah. Uh, I'll probably mostly play this for Super Contra since I already own Castlevania Symphony of the Night on the PS1. But there is a second volume that actually has the arcade version of the original Contra on it, which I do want as well. But I got this for about a third of the price that it goes for online right now, which blew my mind. I was just kind of like, uh, there's no way I'm not coming home with that. Never found the dot? Oh, I found the dot. I even found the little hidden area where they told you the guy's name that made the game. Back in the day, you had to play those games over and over and over again ad nauseum because there was nothing else to do. Picked up a bunch of PS3 games. I picked this one up because uh, a YouTuber that actually, Peter, Mr. Uh, Waves and Games here, introduced me to, taking part in my new uh, collaboration video, Lightsaber Samurai, did like a PS3 Hidden Gems video that I watched, and he was talking about this game, and it was a game that I never wanted to buy because, well, I'll tell you what it is, it's Starhawk, uh, Warhawk, there was like a reboot of Warhawk on the PS3, and it was an online only game. And I was like, oh, did they just decide to make like a sci-fi version of Warhawk, which is all online only as well? I hate all, all online games, so screw that. So I never paid it any attention. Well, it turns out it's not. Yeah, there is an online, online component. You don't need to do it. There is a complete single, single player mode to this. And uh, it's part like third person shooter and also part like Minecraft. We have to like build buildings and stuff. You find like a an area where you can make a settlement and you start building things up and then you have to go out and look for resources and kill things and all that. And uh, I was watching his little, what he was talking about it on his video and I was like, that looks like a lot of fun. I might need to pick this up. So I saw it yesterday at the exchange for a whopping $3. So I picked it up. Can't wait to try it out now that my PS3 is hooked up again and all that. And I'm not one for wrestling games, but I picked up WWE All-Stars. I hear that the ones that came out from THQ that weren't like the Raw and SmackDown and all that kind of stuff uh, during this era, this console generation, were actually pretty good. There's also like Legends of WrestleMania that I want to get, but this is like a real cartoony, arcadey wrestling game. So I like a good wrestling game every now and then. So I picked it up. Not mad. Yeah, Lightsaber Samurai, all the stuff he talked about in that video. I had a bunch of the ones he talked about already, but there was some where I was kind of like, huh. That's interesting. I never thought to look at that one, like Starhawk. When I'm glad I, he, I'm glad he brought it up because now I'm, I talked about it. Uh, I bought it. Uh, so this actually, I bought some accessories to go along with these. So I picked up the PlayStation Three Move like light gun thing that normally would come with Killzone Three, and in order to use this, I had to purchase a PlayStation Three camera, which was relatively cheap at the store yesterday at the video games that are now. This was like twelve bucks. The camera was, I think, 10 and I wanted to buy it because while we're surfing through the PlayStation 3 section, I found a bunch of light gun games, and I know that you can play light gun games on the PS3 with the PS4 move controllers because they did nothing to change them. So I didn't need to buy any move controllers because they're going to they're going like for extremely high prices right now, and I'm not buying another set. 
So I picked up a copy of Time Crisis Raising Storm, which also comes with Time Crisis 4 and what is that? Dead Storm Pirates. Light gun games. The only thing is, there was something that came out with the Move controllers back then for the PS3 called a, uh, a movement controller. You can kind of see it at the top here. It's right next to the Move controller. I had to order one of those, and I got one for like 12 bucks on eBay, so I can't play this just yet because when you use this gun attachment, the Move controller fits in up here, and the movement controller fits in down here, and you need that to play Time Crisis. So I can't play the Time Crisis until that movement controller shows up. Hey, no problem. Glad you're enjoying it, uh, Jamie. Uh, so yeah, I can't play this one just yet, but once that move movement controller shows up, I'm all about it. But the one I have been playing, the one that I was playing all night once I got home, appropriate for Halloween, wouldn't you say, is uh, House of the Dead Overkill Extended Cut. I own this on the Wii. It first came out on the Wii. Shocked the hell out of me that we got a game on the Wii that was all about gore and swearing and sex and crawling back into your mama's vajayjay. Um, but yeah, the extended cut I think has an extra level or something... Extended with brand new levels, yeah, and restored missing footage. And I think they ble they let, well, they did not bleep the language out in this one. Uh, so, yeah, their first section of the game alone, I heard more F-bombs than I hear in your average Quentin Tarantino movie. Uh, so I was playing this last night, and I was having an absolute blast. It is so much fun. I love a good light gun game. I haven't been able to play one in a long time, like a legit light gun game, not something that's, like, VR-related. One where it's just, I have a, a peripheral in my hand, I'm just blowing shit away because I don't have a CRT, I can't play any of those older games. That I was just over the moon playing this last night. I was just like, yes, yes, I've missed you so much. I might actually go and download that House of the Dead 4 off the uh, PlayStation Store just so I can play that too. Because I love me a good light gun game. House of them deads. Mm. Mm. Target was having... So... I don't know if you guys have noticed this out by you, but on Facebook, I keep on seeing people talking about Walmart is like clearancing out modern generation games. Like you would not believe. Like uh, one of my one of my friends on a group bought a copy of Dark Siders three for three cents. Like games at Walmart are going between three cents and three bucks or something like that, and they're just trying to get out. I guess they're trying to get rid of all of their excess copies to make room for the new console stuff. So I was like, hey. I should go there too and see what they got. And none of the targets, or sorry, the Walmarts by me are doing that, which sucks. So it looks like the ones like in Seattle are doing it and the ones in New York are doing it, but I don't know about the ones in Illinois. But then I happened to go to my local Target and they had like a rack in the middle of the aisle right in front of their electronics section where there was like this big thing full of like clearanced out games. Not for three cents, definitely not for three dollars, but they were clearanced way lower than they were going for when they first came out. Like, it's a rare thing when you ever find a, like, a Nintendo game, even one that's for a console that they're not even supporting anymore. The prices for these brand new never drop, but when I find a copy of uh, Kirby Triple Deluxe for seventeen dollars clearanced, you go for it, which I did. And I, I'm slowly becoming a fan of the Kirby games. Never play this one, obviously. Uh, but, yeah, it looks very colorful and lots of new costumes and stuff for Kirby to put on whenever he uh, absorbs a character's powers. So, yeah, I love me a good Kirby game. Just simple, fun, platformer, light combat. PS3 is underrated for light gun games. Well, now that I actually have the ability to do it, I'm probably going to go and look for a whole shitload of them. Just This just showed up last night. Uh, I ordered this on friday and it showed up yesterday and it is the dark pictures anthology it's the second part little hope the first one came out last year and it was man of medan it's made by um super massive games they did under or is it uh until dawn on the playstation 4 which i absolutely loved like these cinematic adventure games with you know you do control people but it's like a, a choose your own adventure movie type of thing and I still have not played Man of Medan, but now that I have the sequel, you know, now it is a legit series, I'm definitely going to play it. I don't know if this is connected in any way, or if it's like, it, well, it says anthology in the title, so probably not. I should read. <laughs> so yeah, I can't wait to jump into this one. And the only reason I got it on the Xbox One was because uh, I bought the first game for it because of the whole 4K thing, because I had the 4K TV, so I wanted to keep going with it on the one console. And now we're going to get into all of the PlayStation 4 stuff. 
So, Joel, you know, Nintendo Joel, recently made a comeback, a very welcome comeback on YouTube. Glad to see that he's making videos again. I love his content. Uh, I follow him on Facebook. We're buddies. And he, like, went into one of his Oregon uh, gamer uh, groups on Facebook, which I'm a part of. Um... <laughs> You like the shirt that much, huh? Let me take it off. No. <laughs> um, he posted, hey, guys, that game Dex is, like, really expensive now or something. And there's a, a guy on eBay that has, like, 10 copies of it. And he's selling it for, like, 15 bucks or 12 bucks or whatever the hell it was. It's the cheapest I've ever seen it. So I was like, Dex, what is that? So I went and I looked up some footage real quick. And he had no one wants to see these moves, man. <laughs> oh, man, I get permabanned. Um, I looked up some footage on on YouTube, and it's a uh, Metroidvania. It's like a cyberpunk Metroidvania. And I went, ah, uh, and I bought myself a copy. So I picked up Dex. I think it's only available physically in the UK. And this comes with the original soundtrack as well as the game on a little disky thing here. It's so quaint. Discs, uh, music discs. Oh, I remember those days. Uh, but yeah, it looks really cool. It's kind of like Flash cart or Flash cartoon looking graphic wise, but I don't care. I'm I'm all about the cyberpunk, so definitely had to have this. I can't wait to actually put some time aside to be able to play it that. And then I had pre ordered this through Strictly Limited like months ago, and then finally it showed up last week. Uh, and that's uh, Xeno Crisis, which I do believe is a twin stick shooter. I think yeah. It's been so long since I cared about this. I guess is the word, uh, that I forgot what type of a game it is. And then it finally showed up months and months down the line. So, yeah, I can finally see what it's all about. I remember everyone was saying that it was pretty cool back then. Uh, but, yeah, my excitement for it has died down significantly since it took months and months and months for it to show up. Bastards. Pick this one up because as I was going through my Amazon wish list on Friday to see what I can, like, take out, stuff that I, like, I just, I'll go through it periodically to take out stuff that I bought elsewhere and stuff that I just don't feel I need anymore or whatever. I'm not interested in. Uh, this showed up and it was like brand new for six bucks. And I was like, I don't give a shit. I'll buy it for six bucks. I'll buy anything for six bucks. And it's the badass from hell, Helmut. And I do believe this is a platformer run and gun type of game. Uh, it's a fast paced bullet storm dungeon crawler that cranks the nonsense up to 11 and puts you right in the thick of it. I was just like, for six bucks, I don't give a shit. <laughs> so, yeah. And I guess you play as, like, a, a werewolf with guns? At least that's what it looks like on the cover. So, yay me? If anyone's played that, let me know. <laughs> I picked up these next two games at that clearance sale that was going on at Target. These were each $13.99. I picked up World War Z. Um, I'm not a big fan of online multiplayer games. That is, I guess, a big part of this. But I hear there's also a single-player mode. So I can play it with some friends I know that own this online, and I can just play it at my whim, you know, at my leisure, offline too. So yeah, I enjoyed the movie to an extent, even though I couldn't stand the book. I thought the movie was okay, uh, but I don't think this follows it. It looks like Left 4 Dead. So, yay? I love a good zombie game. We'll see how that works out. And I picked up Metro Exodus for $13.99 there as well. I have the collection of the Metro games for the PS4, so this is the newest one. So, decided to pick this up as well. First person shooter, if I remember correctly. Yeah, first person shooter, but it's a sandboxy game, like in a ruined world. So, yeah, and it's based off of a, a series of like Russian books or something. I know nothing of this. <laughs> uh, this one I know, Church, you know, the Game Grinder was all about for a while, and I keep on putting off buying it, so. It got discounted on Amazon on Friday, so I was like, sure, why not? So I picked up uh, A Plague Tale, Innocence. Um, I'm not sure what type of a game this is. exploration -y, I guess. I don't know if it's a sort of supermassive type game, kind of like Man of Medan or Until Dawn. Uh, I don't know what kind of a game it is. I just know that everyone I know and I, whose opinions I respect was like, this game is like ropey jets of jism just flying everywhere. It's like, oh, so good. So I was like, sure, I'll do it. <laughs> so, yeah, pick that up. I got it for like 10 bucks. So pre-Black Friday deal, maybe? Third-person action-adventure stuff. What? Okay. I'm all about that, too. I like that stuff. 
But, okay, so you guys know me. I'm all about the license games. I talk about it, not you know, all the time. And my forehead is washed out like crazy. I look like I am dying. Like I put bleach on my forehead. God damn it! I hate this camera. Anyway, I'm all about the license games. But it, this generation, it's been really, really rare to get something that ties into something that's currently like in the theaters or on TV or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, we get Star Wars games. They're not based on any of the movies, except for, like, for Lego Force Awakens we got, you know, back then. But nowadays you just get, like, you might get a Transformers game every once in a while, you know. You get a Star Wars game. There's a Jurassic World game that was, like, a park builder, but it didn't really have anything to do with the movies. So to find a licensed game that is actually released when the thing that it's based on is still in production, you know, whatever, like a TV show... I was beyond over the moon when I saw that there was a game based on Cobra Kai. Uh, and the, the legit name for this movie, this game is Cobra Kai The Karate Kid Saga Continues. I just recently started watching the show on Netflix. I finished the first season. I'm a couple episodes into season two. And then I, I found this at Walmart when I went looking for all those discount games that everyone's been talking about. And I saw this and another game you're going to see next. Uh, that were, had already been discounted even though they had just come out. So I was like, yeah, yeah, why not? So I've been playing this, and it is a beat 'em up where you get to pick between the Cobra Kai dojo or the Miyagi Do dojo. And you get a different story depending on which one you pick. You get four characters. You start off with just the one. Uh, was it just the one? Yeah, I think in the first, the first level you only get... I pl I'm playing it through right now as the Cobra Kai dojo, and you start off with just Johnny. Eventually you get... I can't remember the name of the kid that he's training. Uh, the, the Latin kid. Uh, but eventually you get this girl that I think shows up in the middle of the second season. And eventually you get Hawk. And I've unlocked all, fo all four of those characters that I can swap between as I'm playing. So the thing is, as you're playing the game, if your character's health gets too low, you can just instantly, like on the fly, swap to another character who has full health. And it's kind of like the, the Marvel vs. Capcom games where you can like swap between your characters depending on who's low on health or not. So it adds a level of strategy to like, you know, make sure that you bring that person that is low on health back when you find some health power-ups or whatever to get them back where they need to be. There's like these crazy skill trees for like all these moves that you can unlock when you, with in-game currency. It is nuts. It doesn't have the best controls, I will admit. And the difficulty does ramp up really early. But I am having a really good time playing it. It is a lot of fun. So I am highly recommending if you like the TV show or you like a good beat 'em up, pick this one up. They even have the actors in here playing, doing the voices of the characters. So you got William Zabka playing Johnny. You got uh, Ralph Macchio playing Daniel. All the kids from the show they do their voices in here. Uh, it is really fun. It surprised the hell out of me that this company called Game Mill, which makes me think they're just cranking out licensed games like. LJN used to back in the day would make some like random cash and piece of crap and it's actually pretty fun so I recommend that one the other one that I picked up at the same time is G.I. Joe Operation Blackout which I know is like a third person action adventure game where you can play as a whole bunch of Joes or a whole bunch of Cobra people so I was watching I don't know if he's still here or not but I was watching 8-Bit Glitch stream this when it came out and I just kind of went like huh well, that's a thing. When did a G.I. Joe game come out for the PS4? I think I need that. And that's also by Game Mill, which makes me think that there were these cheap, you know, crapped out games because they released Cobra Kai and this at the same time. Uh, but apparently this game's actually pretty fun too. So, yeah, I can't wait to try this one. And it is multiplayer, like local multiplayer. I think you can play online co-op too or something, but yeah, sure. G.I. Joe was kind of cool back in the day. Why not? But my jam back in the day was the Transformers. So I picked up Transformers Battlegrounds. What is it with all these like old cartoon games coming up? Excuse me, all of a sudden. The only thing with this one is, this one is a strategy game. Uh, I have not played it yet. This actually just showed up yesterday. Went to the movies thing with uh, Rocket Sauce. You're not allowed to eat there. So we basically picked up his order, came back to my place, and when I got home, my mail was here, and this was in the mail yesterday. So, hell yeah. Uh, but it says, Bumblebee and the Autobots have a new commander. You assemble your squad and roll out for battle against the Decepticons and team up in local multiplayer. Okay, I guess. Uh, but from the back, it looks like a legit strategy game. So, 
Cool. Sure. I love a good Transformers game. I love the art style on the front, too. So, yeah, all about that. And the last PlayStation 4 game I have is a VR title, uh, and that is Star Wars Squadrons. Uh, didn't jump on the pre-order bandwagon for this like a lot of people I know did, but I got it like a couple days after it came out, and it wasn't a big deal. It just showed up the next day from Amazon. What a big whoop. Uh, but everyone's been complaining about this game, saying it's so boring, it's so slow, it's not... Uh, uh. Uh, yeah, well, I, the first time I played this, I actually ended up playing it online with my friend Noy, who lives in Florida, and I was on his team, and we are playing, and I was having a hell of a time just trying to shoot anything down, and there's, like, these controllers that you can buy because of this game, these, like, flight control stick things that are compatible with the PS4, like, jumped up in price to over $100, they were, like, I think Noy said he bought his for, like, $20 the week before the game came out, but now the game's out, they're going for over 100 I don't get that at all. But I'm just using a standard PlayStation 4 controller. So I was having a hell of a time trying to actually do anything in the game. I couldn't... Just... It, the controls were weird. Then I decided to play it in VR. And that's where my boner ripped through my pants. Um, playing this in VR is the way to do it. Anyone that has any complaints about this game being hard to control... Once you have the ability to actually, like, look up when a ship flies over your head and, like, follow it and keep shooting, it changes the game completely, and it turns into one of the most fun Wing Commander-esque flight simulator combat games I've ever played. I mean, I was having a blast playing this in three in a VR. It is so good. So if you have a PlayStation VR and you want a really awesome Star Wars game, yes, 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 all the yes. Play this game. I don't know if playing it in 2D after playing it in 3D is going to, like, float my boat, but... We'll see. I'm gonna I'm gonna beat it in 3D or 3D in VR. That is the way to go. And the final game I have to talk about tonight is for the Switch. I really haven't bought anything Switch related, but I did pre-order this from I am 8-bit a month or two ago when they or maybe even more. It feels like I pre-ordered this like when the, the uh, pandemic started. Uh, but it finally showed up. I got this from I am 8-bit, and it is the Untitled Goose Game. I remember this was like the it game for a little while on streaming services like, you know, YouTube and on uh, Twitch. Everyone was playing this game. It's like a puzzle. A puzzle game, I guess, where you play as a duck or a goose, sorry. Um, and you got to do specific tasks and all that. It's made by, was it Annapurna, I think? Yeah. And the, the graphics look just like they did in, um, oh, God, was that game that I streamed for on Twitch a while back? Uh, the one where you, the uh, Donut, uh, Donut County, there you go, it looks like Donut County graphics, so I, I was watching people stream it, and it looked really charming, and fun, and different, and silly, and kind of a weird concept for a game, but I was like, I'm all for new things, you know, so why not, so it was only digital when it first came out, I was like sitting there going, I hope Limited Run or somebody, you know, finally gets the rights to release a, a physical copy of it, and it was I am 8-bit who picked it up, so I gladly ordered a copy, and now I just can't wait to play it. I've been playing my Switch a lot lately because uh, we have a lot of downtime at my job, so I can actually burn through some games. Funny like Goat Simulator? I don't know. Find out. I haven't played it myself. Just got it. Just showed up this week. And that is it. Welcome, J Chip Show. How's it going? You just showed up at the very end, but it's okay. This will be online for you to watch in its entirety if you want at your leisure. So yeah, this is not like my one of my uh, my film streams where it would take three hours for me to talk about ten movies. Thankfully, uh, but yeah, that's it for today. That's everything that I picked up in the month of October. Uh, we'll see how Black Friday pans out in November. Uh, if I pick up a lot of stuff really cheap, there will be a stream. If I don't pick up a lot of stuff, I might do a November December combo again. But we shall see. So thank you, everybody. Yeah, good to hang out. I love I love doing these streams where I get to chat with people as I'm talking about stuff. It's it's awesome. It's a it's a really cool way to interact with you know the people that are watching your channel. So I'm glad all of you came. I'm happy that each and every one of you was here. Uh, so I will talk to you guys next time. I'm definitely trying to finish these videos. I definitely I've been trying to work on that top ten NES game video, and every time I'm like, okay, I have time today to sit down and edit, something happens. Like, my brakes while my car went crazy, and I, uh, 
then my brother came to town my cousins from ohio came to town in october and it was just like i always had something to do during the week when i would normally want to be able to i would come from work get something to eat and then sit here and edit all night and it's just i had not been able to do that and i still want to play games at the same time so it's just like finding the free time is just being a it's, it's a real pain We'll see how that goes this month, because when Thanksgiving off and everything, we'll see how, if I have time to edit at all. Uh, so, yeah, I'm still trying to get that uh, top 10 NES games uh, video game done, because I need to work on that collaboration video. I've got all the uh, other people who are participating in the video. I've got everybody's video. 20 different YouTubers, y'all. Seriously. 20 different YouTubers, aside from myself. It's the biggest one I've ever done. And has also been the most frustrating and the most maddening. Uh, but, yeah. So, I can finally get to work on that once I finish this top ten video. I need to get it done. Hopefully I'll have it done this week. I'm going to try. Seriously, I'm going to sit down and try. I'm not recording a podcast tomorrow. I'm definitely going to sit down and try to edit. Anyway. So, I will talk to you guys later. Chris, the old-ass retro gamer, out. Stay safe, everybody, and have a good night.